Hey everybody, hope you had a great weekend. Today, we're going to be talking about the top 10 stocks in my portfolio in terms of total dividend income. Uh, now, I'm not going to say that this is necessarily the stocks to buy, and I'm not saying that these are necessarily my favorite stocks. It's just at this current point in time, whether I found it was a good investment at the time, this is where the top 10 ended up. Uh, and it's surprising how much of the portfolio it actually is. I was quite surprised by that. And we'll get a little bit more into that in a little bit. Uh, but I like to always start this off so people can kind of get an idea as to how the portfolio is currently shaping up. So uh, currently total portfolio value is about 324000 of which we're talking about 208000 today, almost 209000 split amongst these different sectors. Uh, on the in column D, we see the total percentage of the portfolio uh, by sector, and then in column F, we see the actual income by sector. It's a little bit hard to read that in table form, so let me go and put this into uh, pie chart form. So, consumer uh, discretionary starting here at midnight or 12 o'clock, depending on how you want to talk talk about it. And it goes through all the way through ETFs around this clock here and uh, ends up at midnight again. Um, so to give you guys kind of uh, some context and maybe some, some clear vision, energy is green, uh, real estate here is this blue, financials is this purple here. And you can see, see uh, that the sector weight percentage of the portfolio is slightly coming down, 26% towards energy, uh, but still a large percentage of that is uh, income of 30, almost 33%. So almost a third of the portfolio is coming from energy uh, in terms of income. Uh, consumer staples is getting up there. I'm pretty proud of that. Um, to be honest, I would be pretty comfortable if a lot of these got to the 10% or so range. Uh, but just the luck of the draw of the companies that I'm looking at essentially just pop out. And I really enjoy real estate investment trusts and current financial stocks as well. I think they're relatively cheap uh, compared to some of the other counterparts in the market right now, like IT. But that's a different story for a different day. Um, but anyway, yeah, let's uh, let's kind of get into it. There's the total value of each one of the portfolio and stocks like that. But um, at the moment, uh, I guess I forgot to mention this part of it. Uh, for 12-month income is around $9,800 from 208000 uh, dollars that is about a 4.7 percent yield yield on cost at the moment is six percent so what I invested money in um, you know several years ago over the past five or six years the money that I am getting uh, is about six percent return just from dividends alone that's like your BHPs that I bought in 2015 uh, and other things that I bought in the past have raised dividends and therefore I'm at about six percent a little bit higher than my current yield, which is which is pretty good, but I have a love-hate relationship with this yield on cost number. I think a lot of people put too much emphasis in it. But anyway, uh, did a little bit of work here. So out of the, uh, I believe it was like 43 or so shares, let me see, 47 shares so uh, that I have in the portfolio, the top 10 actually make up about 58% of the total income, which I thought was pretty crazy. Um, and what else do I really want to say about this? I've kind of walked through Cardone Capital and I'm expecting to get about 900 or so dollars. This is kind of, um, I want to say not realistic at the moment, but, uh, in 2020, I guess it really all depends on when I actually start seeing, uh, actual pay payments, which it should be next month. Um, Main Street Capital, I have this in a both IRA and individual brokerage account. Uh, this actually pays me close to $850 a year, which is pretty crazy. Um, so it ends up being like 80 or so dollars a month, which is good to purchase two more shares. Uh, BP Midstream Partners, this uh, I believe was a really good purchase. It's based off of price to free cash flow. Um, and BP just purchased it, you know, in I believe 2016 timeframe. Abbey is a relatively smaller position uh, previously, but since the price drop of the Allergan merger, I really have a lot of confidence in the forward prospects of the company. Um, some 
places in the pipeline or some backlogs in the pipeline and some trials in the pipeline that um, Abby was missing. Uh, I forget what exactly they were, but I had a good conversation with a coworker about it. Uh, Abby was able to replace and get based off of their merger with Allergan. So uh, I believe the merged company will have really good free cash flow, and uh, I think it's both beneficial for both uh, both company shareholders. Wells Fargo, this is just the, the bank of choice that I have. Every time it dips down uh, in the mid-40s, I, I try to buy a little bit more. I think because I have over 200 or so shares of Wells Fargo now, I'm probably just going to hold off on it. Um, but that is what it is. AT&T, very similar. I think around 200 or so shares of this, uh, and it pays a, a pretty good, uh, pretty good dividend, uh, up to 440 or so dollars uh, almost. Uh, and I have two Abbeys on here. Did I mean to do this? I don't think I did. Let me fix it on the fly here for you. Sorry about that, team. Um, so got that all fixed up for us here. Uh, so Wells Fargo is still. Uh, about 400 or so uh, dollars a, a year um, pretty pretty good deal I can't can really complain with that it's almost 100 or so shares uh, so every time I get a dividend of this I'm able to purchase about two two and a half shares which is really good because um, you think about it if you start getting some of these companies that pay you know one to two dollars a year in dividends every quarter when you reinvest the dividends if you're able to get two shares out of it you're increasing your own income by you know, six, eight dollars every single time. Um, you know, I'm just rounding off here, but it's kind of uh, what ends up happening. I think I did a calculation the other day. I think on the 12th, um, I got paid by Stag Industrial, Starwood Property Trust, WP Carey, uh, a couple other companies. And I was like, oh, I wonder what just these dividends being reinvested into their companies, and some of them weren't, some were. Um, will increase my yearly income by and I believe it all went up by about $12 and that's just one quarter and that's only a, a fraction of the companies that paid me just on the 12th so if you think about it, it the the snowball effect really starts happening uh, once you get into the the five-figure range uh, in terms of uh, having some of these companies really having uh, you know into the high four-figure low five-figure range you're really starting to get to a point where the companies are starting to give you a pretty big chunk of cash and if you reinvest it you're going to end up you know increasing your income pretty quickly I uh, already mentioned AT&T but Philip Morris is another pretty big one um, really like what they're doing with the IQOS system I really believe that it's going to continue uh, heavy into the future I think some people are believing it's pretty speculative uh, I can understand that, but I think the success that it's seen in Japan and other southeastern southeastern Asian countries has really been promising from what I've seen. And I believe the partnership of Altria Group, uh, the sister company, uh, will continue, and hopefully licensing that in the United States will continue to be very good as well. BHP, phenomenal, um, phenomenal investment that I made, I want to say in uh, February 2015 or something like that. Uh, I think I I want to say that I wish I held on to some of the shares. I think my position used to be twice the size as it was. And I believe I purchased the first tranche of 100 shares at about $30 or so. Uh, and so I actually had over 200 and some shares at one point of BHP. Um, and I want to say it was in 2015 time frame. And I sold half of them once they broke even. Uh, and I'm really kind of shooting myself in the foot because I just want to double check. I don't want to lie to you guys here, but I want to say my BHP um, BHP yield on cost is pretty good. Yeah, it's about 14%. Uh, so every every half year, I'm getting about 6% return on my investment, 6-7% uh, on my return on my investment just from the dividends. That's not even including um, anything else, but I have 100 sh 107 shares originally. This used to be up around 200 or so. Sold half of them. And just from reinvested dividends, it's about 135 um, shares now. So just an in increase of almost 30 shares just based off the fact that I've been reinvesting for the past couple months uh, or pa past well, couple quarters. But um, really excited about this one. I mean, just look at the cost basis. 
these shares are around 2400 uh, for the cost basis and they're up around 7000 now so 190 or so percent return um, yield on cost about 14 percent which doesn't really mean anything other than I made a good decision back in the day but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good decision to hold on to BHP going forward but I really like BHP uh, and I believe they got some more room to run so I don't plan on selling it anytime soon and then I also have Verizon uh, which rounds out the, the top 10 so appreciate you guys being there with me uh, while, I, while I fixed up everything um, but yeah relatively interesting uh, in terms of where we are in the portfolio two companies I think the reason why uh, AT&T and Verizon both show up is that there's only two of these companies uh, out of this whole 7.4 percent wedge um, and uh, compared to some of the other ones like energy you know this is split up against this 55,000 is split up against you know a multitude of stocks whereas uh, this 15,000 is really only split between AT&T and Verizon so it just means that more likely that you know those stocks are going to come come up for air the most but not to say that the energy stocks weren't there I mean you still had BPMP and BP uh, right at the top so um, number two and number three but uh, real estate was also also pretty big as well I think it had um, two showing up uh, as well in the top ten so um, that's really it uh, really curious what you guys have to say about my top ten stocks I think I've mentioned to others in the past that Maine was my previously highest paying dividend company and in terms of stocks I believe it still is for sure because Cardone Capital is kind of a private real estate you know thing so who knows what this really is it's a partnership not really a, an investment in a publicly traded stock whereas Maine obviously you get that from uh, from publicly traded stocks so uh, this still technically is my highest paying paying um, dividend stock by far so really curious what you guys have to say uh, really curious what your top 10 are uh, and if you think that this is a good list bad list or what have you um, any other suggestions for videos in the future uh, more than happy to hear about it uh, and always love the comments that you guys leave down below I try to answer them as best as I can if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, uh, please please feel free to do that. Generally speaking, I talk about you know my stock portfolio, three hundred or so thousand dollars under management, and what have you. So um, if you're interested in hearing about that, I generally give monthly updates on how much dividend income I had and minor updates throughout the month about things like this. Like I just decided to to figure out what the top ten were and I wanted to share it with you guys, so that's what I do. Um, so. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys uh, and see you on the next video.